Long before Nigeria became a net importer of rice, the country had a long tradition of growing rice and prided herself as a multi-variety producer of the crop. It is therefore the major staple food in Nigeria. Indeed, Nigeria is the largest producer of rice in West Africa, with the crop grown on approximately 3.7 million hectares of land. Regardless of the season, as you travel across the vast terrain of Nigeria, a careful observer will not miss the lush green of rice paddies stretching several hectares of green fields. However, with Nigerians changing their consumption pattern, the country ended up spending billions of naira importing from other regions of the world what it can actually grow in commercial quantities in the soils of Nigeria. It is a paradox that the largest producer of rice in West Africa is also the second largest importer of the crop in the world. At the central Although there exist several challenges to rice production in Nigeria, importation of the crop poses the gravest challenge to Nigeria becoming self-sufficient in the production of rice. Importation of rice is the worst nightmare for Nigeria's local producer of rice. A simple market survey reveals that imported brands of rice enjoy greater prominence on the shelves of departmental stores and many a market in the urban areas. Now, the multi-billion Naira question. Why is Nigeria still a large importer of rice in the world, with huge rivers, low lands and fertile deltas, limitless opportunities to grow excellent quality of rice? Available statistics indicate that Nigeria spends over 300 billion Naira annually importing rice, a situation the fiscal and monetary authorities have found very disturbing and are making efforts to reverse. If the Central Bank of Nigeria has evidence that any commodity can profitably be produced here in Nigeria, and that Nigeria has comparative advantage in the production of that commodity compared to other countries, when we add that commodity to the list of 41 items, it will become 42 items. If we discover a third one, it will become 43 items. We must first have a country before we can enjoy what other people are producing. We must first have a currency before we can say we have commanding power. We must first have monetary policy. If we don't have monetary policy, we do not have a central bank. The fiscal authorities before now had sought to encourage investment in the local production through its rice policy that introduced an import differential on brown or polished rice imported by investors in the sector with a verifiable backward integration agenda. Nigeria has absolute potential to produce enough rice to feed Nigeria. And Nigeria was spending um, billions of naira in the area of rice procurement, um, wheat, fish, sugar, um, oil palm into this country and to talk about so many other products. But we have decided with the dwindling uh, income from the oil to look inward. Yeah, but it's not an oil producing state that we say we have some derivatives of the internal of the revenue from oil. And so the economy of the state is entirely agri based and some solid minerals, so to say. So rice is the first crop of interest. And therefore, any attempt by government and specifically by the CBN to support local production and also encourage the utilization of the party that is produced will be an encouragement towards economic diversification. And the Central Bank of Nigeria have taken it as a responsibility. I'm sure the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria had a premonition 
that things like this was going to happen when he came as a part of his uh, agenda for his tenure. He said he was focusing on development financing that will enable him to focus on agriculture, SMEs, infrastructure, and all that. Following government efforts to increase rice production, the output in the 2013-2014 dry season more than doubled to 2.96 million metric tons of paddy and 1.92 million metric tons of milled rice. The goal is to produce enough to meet the growing demand of the population of over 170 million people. Rice has been our staple food here. Farmers are very happy here to grow rice. Wherever you go, you'll find farmers busy working and harvesting their crops of rice without any complaint. In fact, our happiness is that we are going to produce what we believe will help this country. When I learned of what the governor of Central Bank said about uh, foreign exchange, that he would stop supporting importers of rice. If they want to import it, let them do it with their own money. I am highly pleased. I am very delighted to hear this. Because it will force the millers to come to us and buy what is in this country. We are able to produce enough rice for the use of this nation. I am positive that Nigeria can be self-sufficient in these things. In a recent meeting with officials of state governments and rice processing companies, the governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, noted that the massive importation of rice in the past one year triggered a glut of paddy. This adversely affected local producers making the efforts of governments to boost rice production unrealizable. We have our agenda in Central Bank. And our agenda in this is to see how, instead of importing rice into the country, that we produce rice into the, in the country for our people. And by producing rice for our people, what you find is that the demand for the importation of rice will cease. Hopefully, we begin to see ourselves as an exporter of rice, and that will help to conserve our foreign reserves. We are very determined to achieve this, and hence, we have taken up this challenge. We spend huge amounts to import items which could be produced locally, thereby exporting jobs to other countries at the detriment of our local industry. On June 23, 2015, the CBN issued a policy circular excluding 41 items, including rice, from being procured with foreign exchange from the Nigerian foreign exchange markets. According to the governor, the thrust of the new policy is to conserve the country's foreign reserves and facilitate the resuscitation of domestic industries as well as improve employment generation and wealth creation. We have identified many areas that we can quickly bring into additional cultivation for rice and we are working with uh, the Kevy Agricultural Development Association is going to start mobilizing young farmers who will see farming as a business such that we will give them those, those new acreages, extension support, financing support, so that we can, they can key into the program and it will help us achieve the dual element of reducing unemployment and boosting rice production. All our people are complaining, well look, you encourage us to produce rice, we have done so, but nobody has come to buy it from us. Instead you find the millers going outside the country, uh, importing rice to the disadvantage of the local farmers. If I know after the harvest I will get a buyer, next year I will increase the yield. And uh, this is what is going to happen now 
since they have no alternative but to come to us. When paddy is produced and it is not marketable due to the growth occasioned by importation, it will be of no economic value to the farmer themselves. So we encourage and support whatever measure that government is going to take to make rice production marketable, to make the farmer more identified as a business person. Specifically, the Abuja meeting sought to address the glut of rice paddy in the country, how the glut will be mopped up by rice millers, and the development of a long-term implementation plan to create an efficient ecosystem whereby millers work in close partnership with rice farmers and producers to create sustainable outgrower schemes. In a body state, 90% of all adults are rice farmers. No matter how small the rice field may be, a greater percentage of the population are engaged in rice farming. The decision that you have taken uh, towards those that import rice has come at the right time. This is because the price of the paddy in our state has gone so down that our farmers are being discouraged. And this is because there is a high level of uh, dichotomy from buying from locally produced uh, paddy. Rather, there is um, a lot of importation. And so uh, we have no other source of income apart from rice. And by extension, agriculture. To underscore its determination in this regard, the CBN has introduced the Anchor Borrower Program. The Anchor Borrowers Program is about creating a linkage between the smallholder farmers and the integrated rice millers. It's encouraging the producers to produce for the integrated rice millers. What we observe is that most of them are not the producers, the smallholders, when they produce paddy, at times there's the issues of uh, marketing, uh, the issue of selling. So we are now encouraging the integrated rice millers to be able to now serve as soft tickers to the small orders farmers. So invariably it's going to increase production. It's going to also ramp up the issue of blocking the consumption gap. Recently, a team from the CBN, led by the advisor to the governor on development finance, visited Kebi State to assess the level of glut of paddy and evaluate how best the bank can support the rice farmers and processors. Thank you to the governor of the central bank and his team for the initiative. Because when, I, when he and I first spoke, I was apprehension about whether there is enough rice in Nigeria to sustain the radical step that the central bank announced of restricting <coughs> foreign exchange to importers of rice. But I'm happy that the Rice Farmers Association has made us and him proud and we want to assure him uh, that the rice producing states are able and capable of achieving self-sufficiency and indeed have the potential to produce enough more for export to other countries. I led a team of key stakeholders in the rice value chain, which included uh, processors, integrated millers in the country, primary producers, um, press bin and the central bank, those in the financial sector, to assess uh, uh, the level of party glut in Kami State. What we saw was so reassuring that this nation can feed itself comfortably and beyond the shores of Nigeria, the whole of uh, West African coast, we have the capacity to do so. And that gave us some respite. Within the two days we spent there, we were able to pull together over 150,000 metric tons of rice. The expanse of Fadama fertile land is unbelievable. Over 500,000 hectares uncultivated. Look, it means that this nation has no business with poverty at all.
Similarly, another team from the CBN during the Banks Fair in Abakaliki Ebony State visited rice millers to observe the rice milling process and also gauge the level of assistance the bank could render to revamp the rice industry in that belt. CBN is aware that there has to be concrete collaboration between the fiscal and monetary authorities to make the revamp process a huge success. That is why it has continued to partner the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. On behalf of our rice farmers here present, the rice millers and all other stakeholders in the rice value chain express profound appreciation. Central Bank, I want to pledge and commit that we as a ministry and as a sector will do everything possible to ensure that this policy intervention will succeed. We are able to produce the rice that we need in this country. There has been no debate about the quality of the rice that we produce. Anybody who is in the rice business now should know that the future is in local production. Beyond the words, there has to be action to enhance the capacity of local producers of rice to meet local demands and compete with others in terms of quality. On behalf of the rice processors, I want to assure you of our support, as we did the last time. We see this effort not for the farmers, though they may claim, but for us also that invest a lot of money to build this sector. The farmers, yes, got their land, most of them inherit from Popo grand, from grandfathers, less investment, but I and this gentleman here and rest of us invest a lot of money in this sector. We have come to a stage that we start asking ourselves, have we made the right investment? Are we in the right place? Because of enormous problem, which by this simple act, you have almost cured, uh, I won't say 90%, almost all of our problems. When the government came up with a new policy of exclusion of rice in, as part of uh, 41 products, uh, those of us that uh, last year when we came together, sourced capital uh, from the international market as additional equity for our businesses, an additional debt, we felt that we, we have taken the right decision uh, because uh, the additional capital that we got for specifically for investment in the rice value chain uh, from production landscape production to, to milling capacity and marketing, we felt that was not misplaced. When he came up with this policy, we felt, and our shareholders and investors already uh, this investment that uh, we've, we've gotten, of course, will be protected. Indeed, Nigeria has an attractive market for its rice at home, and the entire West African subregion provides additional markets that can be explored to market the various varieties, such as Ofada, Abakaliki, Nerika 8, and Faro 44, that can be produced in exportable quantities. In Nigeria. In this stride to make Nigeria self sufficient, we believe we can do it. We believe we can quickly double the tonnage. And in fact, we are working on, the, on a strategy to ensure that commencing with this dry season farming, our rice output should increase by no less than 500,000 tons. We are talking to a number of uh, persons who are interested and expansion in our own domestic uh, activity. Nigerians have an opportunity now to invest and meet this market, the needs of this market. 180 million people is not small. Other countries see a lot of potential. They are coming here. That's why they are coming here to invest here. Let us invest, produce these goods, and Nigerians are here. There's a market for these goods here. All loopholes and leakages that will make people frustrate this effort 
will fight against it. So I don't, I don't think I want any of us to be to fall in the way. That's what I'm advising. That let's all just change direction and say, let us see what we can do to grow rice. The understanding among the stakeholders, state governments, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, farmers, and the CBN is that with the collaboration of all, Nigeria in the next few years will cease to be one of the world's highest importers of rice and become a major net exporter of the crop. At the central